So what we have, what we have right here is a 5.7 liter beast of a drift car, LS Swap Miata. And what would a drift car be without a hot, flashy body kit? So today I'm gonna walk you through the process of exactly how I go about painting said body kit. And I know it's gonna come out perfect for this car. And now, you're watching the, if you message me about turning $100 into $800, I automatically blocked you. Channel of YouTube, welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what's happening back at it with the LS Swap Miata? Man, it's LS Swap crazy around here lately. So what I want to get started on is I have all these parts. The KBD body kit, front bumper, back bumper. Also, we got the hood up over there and the shadows up on the container just so that way there's something. Man, the sun is crazy right now. Just so that way there's something behind it. So as I'm pressure washing it, I'm just going to spray it down with a degreaser first and then pressure wash it. That should get all the dirt, all the grease, everything off the bottom side of the hood. And then the KBD body kit, I'm going to scrub it a little bit more because these parts matter a little bit more. Not that the bottom of the hood doesn't matter. It's just that the bumpers matter a little bit more. Now that I pressure washed everything to really make sure there's no decontaminants on it, I'm doing everything that I possibly can to assure that that surface is clean because if the surface isn't clean, especially with this body kit, see a lot of body kits, they have a really nasty release agent on it and it's really slimy and gross. So you gotta make sure you get rid of all of that. So now that it's decreased and pressure washed, I wanna get the car moved out of here, then get the parts in here, then sand them down with my DA and I'm using a uh, 220 just to sand them down completely. Alright, so now that everything's prepped out and pretty much ready to go, we have the front bumper, back bumper, both side skirts, the inside of the fenders, and then the underside of the hood. I want to go ahead and get all of these primed, that way I can sand that down, and hopefully yet today, I can go for that sealer base coat, clear coat on at least the body kit, um, everything that we have here. That way this can all be, this can all be put behind us. So everything laid out quite nicely. Now one thing that I did with the KBD body kit, especially not so much the other parts, is the first coat of primer I just went on really lightly. I was about eight inches away and just barely dusted the primer onto there. And then I went to the piece that I started with after I did all of the pieces, meaning I started with the side skirts, dusted them, went to the bumpers, dusted them, then I went back to the side skirts after they tacked up just a little bit, and then I did a full coat. And that first coat is to kind of introduce the body panel to the actual primer because I've painted these before 
before and I did not have good luck with them and that that actually worked out for me this time. So now what I gotta do is I just gotta prep these down with a 600 grit sandpaper or I gotta finish off with a 600 grit. If I was a little bit rough in some areas, I'm gonna go down to maybe a 400 or so. But I gotta get a 600 grit finish before I can do that sealer. And that's what we're working towards. And actually, we just jumped forward a little bit. I don't need to keep showing you sanding and sanding and sanding. You get the idea. So the surface right now is finished off with a 600 grit. Now that's low enough of a grit for the sealer to actually grab onto something, but high enough of a grit for it to be nice and smooth. I found that to work best with as I'm doing it. I feel like if you're going up to 1000 grit or 1500 or anything in that range, the surface is just going to be too smooth or anything less. You might see some scratches in the mix. So that's what I like to do. I like to end off with a 600. So now, since the color is blue, the base color is blue, we want to go with the gray sealer. So I already got that mixed up. Nothing left but to spray it down. And Minus 50. Goddamn 47. Oh god dang that looks good man. This stuff came out as good as it needed to be and then some. For this car being a drift car I know it's gonna get crashed. If this bumper gets completely annihilated in just a couple of in a couple of runs. It could even happen on the first run but that's okay. I'm okay with that. It's all for the fun of it. These parts look phenomenal. I'm definitely happy with how they came out. Now keep in mind, they are not perfect. When you're doing this stuff, you gotta understand that it's just for fun, especially on a part like this where these imperfections are here. It's, it's really all good. We're not going for concourse restoration. We're just in it to have fun. It looks really good. Like I said, it looks better than it really needed to look. The reflection is phenomenal. Everything, I mean, look at that. That looks good. I'm definitely happy with that. I'm happy with how they came out. I know for a fact the owner's gonna be happy with it because when he dropped off the car, super easy going. He said as long as it's blue, that's good with him. So I think this is this is definitely surpassing expectations. This looks really good. So now coming around full circle to the actual premise of this video, how to paint a body kit. Now there's a couple different ways to do this and I know some people would say you gotta put a flex additive because these panels are extremely flexible or what about putting an adhesion promoter. Now what I have found to work best for me is if you have a good bond, a chemical bond from one material to the next material to the next material, you're going to be absolutely just fine. Taylor Ray, I don't know if you're familiar with Taylor Ray, but 
he has a drift car with this exact kit, a KBD body kit, and he's had pieces actually fold in half with my paint on it, and I did it the exact same way, and my paint actually stayed on it. My paint flexed with the panel, and I did the same exact process. So just a quick summary, just to wrap everything up, the first thing that I did was pressure washed it, degreased it, cleaned up everything as good as I possibly could. Then I went with that 220, pressure washed it again just to get all that sanding stuff off of it, and then I went through the primer. After the primer was done, I sanded it up to 600 grit. I started with a little bit lower where it needed to be, and also the process of dusting down the primer and then doing an additional coat on top of that, I found it to not lay down quite as smooth, so I started with a 400 grit, then I finished it off with a 600 grit. And then, once that was cleaned, we went into the sealer, and since the base coat is blue, I actually went with a gray sealer. You can use whatever sealer you want, just certain sealers work better with the base coat, just depending on what you're doing. So I did the sealer, base coat, and then I smacked two coats of clear on top of that, and that's exactly how it looks right now. You could, of course, go ahead and wet sand and buff this if you would like to, but with this car being a drift car and how good it already looks, that's not even gonna be necessary. So now getting back to the car, we got all those other pieces on as well. The insides of the fender, the underside of the hood. As you can see, that looks good. Everything looks really good. Now coming up in the next video, the next video is gonna be it. That's gonna be the video where I'm going to be painting the car. I'm not gonna drag this on any longer than it needs to be. And also in the next video, we got a special guest. I'm not gonna tell you exactly who it was, but if there was, and if there is a society of paint, that's gonna be who it is. So I think that's gonna be for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Also, check out the merch. Do all the stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. I'm out.